Before we begin today's video, I would like to issue an apology for the lack of content last week on this channel. I was actually a lot busier with real life things than I envisioned that I would be and never really got the time to record more videos than I had wanted to, which is why you only got the one video last week. However, this week things are a lot smoother for me on the real life end. So I should be able to not only produce this video, but also at least two others, depending on anything that comes up or any topics that interest me. Thank you for your understanding. Now, let's get right into the competition. It is something that we all try to invest into when it comes to our lives, whether that be in sports, in gaming, or even in the social media landscape. Everything to us is turned into a form of competition and that includes businesses and other entities that we see every single day of our lives. Now, what you should know is that competition is actually extremely healthy and it is something that should be embraced. And that's what we are here to actually discuss today is just why competition is healthy and should be embraced by the general population no matter how toxic it may appear to some or however uncompetitive people might perceive themselves to be let's get into this discussion right now first thing that should be noted is that competition is all around us and that it is entirely natural you look out into the wild and you will see animals competing for mate for territory, for food, just like in the human world or the real world as we know it, you'll see businesses competing for sales, you will see people competing for games, wins, and you will see people here on social media competing for likes, subscribers, followers, retweets, and you get the drift compared on the whatever social media platform you're using it's more on this sort of platform which is youtube it would be likes and subscribers that are the aim the end goal and also you have like in sports competitions you have awards trophies just like you do in other competitions like games or beauty pageants you get the drift it is meant to be an entirely natural thing now, there are people who will say, oh, then why can't you cooperate instead of simply competing and try to achieve the same goal together? That is not an entirely correct way of you viewing it. Yes, to an extent, competition is the opposite of cooperation. But if you want to look at it from an objective, logical, real-world standpoint, you will see that cooperation is actually implemented within competition especially when it comes to team sports and especially with esports and the teams you need to cooperate with the members of your team in order to win the competition or at least develop a stratagem that is considered optimal for the situation that you find yourself in this is something that we can also apply to daily life when you are discussing with somebody that you could or even might be directly competing with at that time you see that's the thing is you've got to approach a competition as not only a means to an end when it comes to victory but also the route of getting there and how you are going to optimize not only yourself but your team strategy to ensure that the outcome is left beyond any doubt and that you are the one that walks away with the award this is especially prevalent within businesses as they need to directly optimize their strategy and direct their marketing to the optimal audience in order to develop their consumer base and, in a sense, steal consumers from rival companies, if you wish to call it stealing, because, of course, consumers can choose wherever they wish to go and it's not technically finite, it's not technically one 
company or another you can choose both companies or just like on social media you'll notice that people will target a specific demographic or will use the algorithm in a certain way to leverage themselves within the competition which again the subscribers aren't necessarily exclusive however there are some that are and of course you can play right into them to increase your own count and in a sense win what this competition is all about just as PewDiePie has done just as T-Series is doing by directly competing with them and forcing him to sort of elevate his own tactics, his own game in order to thrive, in order to continue surviving as the number one subscribe channel on YouTube which is, as I said, entirely healthy. That's what you should want as a person. That's what you should want as an ent entertainer. You should so want someone to push you to make your own content rise just like as a company you should want another company to compete with you as like the sony versus microsoft apple versus samsung when it comes to the galaxy versus iphone or android as some people will call it android versus iphone so it's more so google rather than samsung and apple they're both trying to push their technology, their operating systems to make sure that they are optimized and the best that they possibly can be. The direct benefit of this competition, as opposed to a monopoly or an oligopoly, in regard, and more so in the business sense, is actually lower prices whenever you go to a business or sort of like let's just say Bunnings Warehouse for those in Australia that will know it how they if they have a competitor that has a better price they'll lower their own price by 10% to them this is a means of making sure that they bring customers into their hardware store even those that were in a different co hardware company and found the price there that was tempting They'll make it more tempting in order to lure that customer away and keep bringing them back to buttonings for more and more. Just like with YouTube subscribers as well, you'll see different people make out different offers like, Hey look, we have a giveaway if you subscribe in a certain period of time. That is their means of trying to lure some subscribers that may have been watching other competing channels and say hey oh look this channel is doing this for us so what are you going to offer us to try to compete with that how are you going to elevate your content in order to compete with what these guys are offering us which is why you'll always see people change things up and tweak their content to try to suit the demographic that they are wishing to to pursue or striving to bring in as opposed to the other content creators now the commentary community is very very competitive in that regard you'll see each people will talk about the same sort of topic but they'll do it in a way that targets their demographic or their target demographic whether or not that be like let's just say the 12 to 15 range the 15 to 17 range the 18 to 20 range, the 20 to 25 range, and so on and so forth. And that's what you should expect. You should expect a cycle of competition with each party bringing you content that they assume or they perceive that you would like. Just like with, as I said, with television and radio as well. They will bring in hosts, they will put on shows and music that they believe their target demographic will like in order to get their eyes and ears onto their particular station above all other stations. Whether or not they are actually in the same field or the same genre if we're using television as an example here or even radio because there are some stations that will focus more on classical music in order to bring in the older audience or those who may be a little more cynical and jaded about the more modern 
pop music, which I personally do find boring, but again, that's not the discussion here. The discussion is meant to be about competition, which as well is a very vital part of ecology, whether that be on a social standpoint or even on an environmental standpoint, because you've got animals, humans, and plants all vying for like food, water, territory, land, which of course, competition does breed wars, but again, as unhealthy as wars might be and the casualties of them, at the end of the day, they are all about trying to assert yourself as a powerhouse, which is understandable whether or not the cost is actually worth the risk. It is something that I'm not entirely going to discuss here because I do have opinions on wars and the actual socio-economic impact they have on the countries involved. However, the military budgets that are set aside for them can, in the at least in the eyes of the governance of the day, validate pursuing it, even if the means don't always justify what the end result is, and that is war. Sometimes they do, but again, we're getting a little bit too political here, and it's for another discussion. Back to the actual competition's standpoint, I've always been a firm believer that competition is the healthiest thing that you can have within a social ecosystem or a society, and it truly does implement the desire for survival of the fittest, and for those who are truly worthy of being the top dog, for those who are willing to elevate themselves and make sure that they know the optimal strategies and that they are willing to optimize themselves to a position where they are the fittest, in turn has the flow on effect of elevating those that they are competing with to try to match them. It's almost like you're dangling a little carrot in front of someone's face and saying, hey, I can do this. Try to better me or you're going to re realize that I was right, that I was always better than you. And yes, there is always a psychological toll. There is always a physical toll involved with competition, but you expect that. You come to learn that you embrace if you embrace it, then you yourself will actually improve as a person. At least psychologically, I do believe that. I psych believe that psychologically, having someone there to compete with, having someone there to actually make sure that you're never able to get complacent, that you're never able to really settle with the strategies that you have in place and are always looking to optimize your own strategies and not fall into the Nash equilibrium, as they call it, which is where the strategies do not change because everyone has the optimal strategy having taken into account the strategies of those around them. So if they're not changing, then why should I change? That's not how it all works in real life, as the Nash equilibrium is more pertaining to video game strategies which is why it is in the game theory field. In real life, people are consistently changing their strategies as soon as they notice what their competitors are doing. As soon as they see where their competitors want to go directionally, they are making sure that they tweak their own operating systems, that they tweak their own strategies in order to account for the new variations for the new deviations from the mean, as we'll call it, with the mean here being the initial strategy. However, the competition we have been discussing here is the actual narrowest form of competition, which is direct competition, because <laughs> there isn't even always direct competition. There's always elements like indirect or substitute competition, which is where you are competing with like 
to like sort of topics like butter and margarine. However, there are differences between the two and they can, however, be seen as substitutes for one another. And on top of that, you've also got to factor in that competition isn't always external. It isn't always between two different companies. There is always competition between people or employees within companies who are trying to go for promotions, trying to go for pay raises, or even trying to make sure that it is their strategy that is the one that is ultimately implemented, that is the one that has been optimized. And even within teams, there are those that battle for captaincy, those who try to stand out and be the leader and compete with others for that leadership role. Again, I do get that competition may not be seen as healthy and I do get that sometimes people may see competition as not being worth it for the ultimate cost, especially when you look at the financial sector and that also with price wars where prices can actually be driven up due to competition rather than being driven down. However, that is not what I personally believe you should look at with competition you should be seeing competition as a way to better yourself you should be seeing competition as something that is healthy and that can psychologically harden you for when times are rough for when things may not always go your way you can figure out a means to further optimize your budget to try to at least Gain some benefit and some way of actually winning the competition if that's what you wish to call it. Some might not call it winning. I will in this case as it's the most simplistic way of explaining it to you. Now, I hope after this you can understand at least some of the reasons why I think competition is healthy in regards to human and also socioeconomic development and growth in order and basically get an outline of what I personally am thinking when I say competition is the healthiest thing you can have as a person or even if you look outside in the general environment. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go for now. But I'll be back sooner rather than later with a new video and it will be something that is a little more fun.